Smithy Industries. A lot of people have questions about setting these up. When they come from the factory, they're set in mill multi-purpose machine configuration. You can set them up as a lathe only, a mill only, or a multi-purpose machine. So if it's on the granite, it's going to be set as multi-purpose. If it's on a standalone lathe or standalone mill, it will be set up as a mill or a lathe. Um, if that isn't the case or you want to change it, we've had a number of customers that want that don't want it in mill or multi-purpose mode. If you want to change it, it's in the instruction manual, but the manual can be a little bit confusing, and so ho hopefully this little step will um, save you some time. Turn it on, and you're going to hold the, the decimal point for three seconds. And that kicks you into setup mode, and it's asking you what you want. So X resolution, do you want it in five? You can have it in different resolution configurations. Um, down arrow. Kicks you through all these. Uh, you can change X axis direction, reversal, zero or one. A lot of these you're not going to do anything for. Uh, but if you need to, then they're there. So you're just working your way down. Uh, here is where you would change from mill to lathe, EDM, lathe, zero is the multi-purpose machines, that's milling only, so one is mill only, two is EDM, three is lathe, so you really have zero, one, two, three, four are your options. Um, linear encoders, white level, you can increase or decrease the display brightness, it's 5 by default, test off, after you hit down arrow one more time you should see it flash down one more time and then your settings are saved. If we want to verify that we could turn it off, turn it back on, should say no MS and then ALE is absolute con positional control. Switch your decimal point configuration here. Uh, the easiest way MI stands for mil millimeter or inch so right now we're in millimeter uh, back to inch you'll see this more five you can do five or four positions if we switch it to five press enter now we have five digits past the decimal point again okay one of the things that's going to pop up is your directions uh, in inversing them. If you look at this machine, if we move our carriage to the right in a X positive fashion on a coordinate system, you know, we're moving this way on it, which is technically correct, which would be a positive number, but if you think about it in relationship to where your tool tip is, your, your tool is actually moving to the left on the part. You know, your table's moving away, your tool's stationary, and you're, so we're on the negative side. So really this axis is backwards. Um, this direction we should be having positive numbers, this direction we should have negative numbers. So we're going to switch that real quick in the control. Again, power off, hold the button, hold the decimal point button. We're going to go down to x-axis direction, by default it's zero. We want to change that to a one. Enter. Down arrow all the way through. We're going to re-zero this. And now you'll see as the table moves to the right, the tool on the part is going to move to the left, which should give us a negative number. 
and it does. Go back to zero, moving now in a positive fashion. Okay, one of the things that's going to pop up is your directions uh, and inversing them. If, if you look at this machine, if we move our carriage to the right in a X positive fashion on a coordinate system, you know, we're moving this way on it, which is technically correct, which would be a positive number. But if you think about it in relationship to where your tool tip is, your, your tool is actually moving to the left on the part. You know, your table's moving away, your tool's stationary, and you're so we're on the negative side. So really this axis is backwards. Um, this direction, we should be having positive numbers. This direction, we should have negative numbers. So we're going to switch that real quick in the control. Again, power off. Hold the button. hold the decimal point button. We're going to go down to x-axis direction. By default it's zero. We want to change that to a one. Enter. Down arrow all the way through. We're going to re-zero this. And now you'll see as the table moves to the right, the tool on the part is going to move to the left, which should give us a negative number. And it does. Go back to zero, moving now in a positive fashion. One question that might come up or might be important is you know, if you come from a wave background and some machines are set up where you're pulling off a radial value or a diameter value. Um, so if you move this let's say ten thousandths of an inch in the y direction and you take a cut on the lathe it might be pulling off ten thousand or it might actually be pulling off the full diameter of twenty thousandths so you can set the control to match whatever you're used to on the lathe uh, and to do that again you're going to turn the power on and hold this decimal point down until you hear the beeping noise. And really, typically on a, a lathe, uh, your z-axis would be um, concentric with the spindle, x-axis would be your, your crossway, but it confuses the situation when you have a multi-purpose machine. We're gonna stick to normal coordinates, x, left to right, or headstock to tailstock, and y, to and from the operator. Z, we'll leave as your millhead spindle. So really we're only concerned with how the way our Y axis reads. So we're going to change its uh, settings here on the Y axis. Um, and by default at tap 5, that means when you move the carriage one thousandths of an inch, the display is going to show one thousandths of an inch. If you set it on setting 10, when you move one thou, it's actually going to show two thou here on the display. So we'll we'll let's set it as five, and we're just going to go down through all our other settings are correct. We're going to zero out our display, and remember we're setting uh, one to one here. So if I move this carriage ten thou. We should be displaying 10 thou on the machine. Okay, let's do the same thing. We'll change our resolution back. Or I guess it's not really even resolution. It's just the way the encoder reads that input. So again, turn the power on y-axis we're going to change it to 10 which you know you have a 0 through 9 numerical keypad so 0 is the 10 enter down 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 
down. And we're reading at 20 thou. Uh, so if I move this another 10 thou, it should be actually reading 40 thou on the... And our display shows 20 thou. question that pops up often is what the ALE stands for, and that's absolute positioning. The alternative is incremental, uh, and you can toggle between the two by the up and down arrows. And the second question people will have, well, okay, why would I use absolute positioning or incremental positioning? And the best uh, way to show that is just to actually look in the manual on the bottom of page four. Some dimensions are given, our zero, 00 location or part location is this bottom left corner. And the first whole dimension is dimensioned off of that. So actually the first two are dimensioned off of that bottom corner. So you would stay in absolute position. That's our start, our work coordinate zero, absolute zero. Um, once you get to this hole, they're not dimensioned off the bottom. And the, of course the math on these are, are easy, but if it wasn't, um, you know, you could reset your zero incrementally off of here, move over 10 millimeter and start that new hole, and then 10 millimeter in the Y axis direction and start that hole. And then if you look at our last hole, it's again um, dimension from this bottom location. And so you could flip back over into absolute position, pick up that hole, and be done with it. So we'll just give an example here on the control. If I move over, um, it's 50 thou, that's my first hole. My next hole is 100 thou. We're still in absolute position. Now, my third hole is uh, 50 thou from that hole. We could just simply hit our clear these out, clearing them, you just hit the button. What's there? Next hole is 10 thou from there. Um, when we jump back to our absolute position, well, we have 110 thou, so it's 110 thou from our original position. We can incrementally jump features. It's kind of so next, we're going to run through just a few simple functions on this digital readout. This digital readout is not like the old ones where all you had was metric or inch conversion. It has a ton of options. Bolt hole circles, linear arrays, smoothing radiuses. So you can put a radius on a part in the X, Y plane, uh, X, Z, Y, Z. Um, you know, you could put concave or convex curves on corners. Uh, you could also use it in a wave function if you wanted to put a big radius on the end of the part. There's tons of functionality in this control. Uh, first thing, we'll do linear array of holes. So we're going to press this linear array hole button. And we can do it, again, we can choose our planes. We're going to keep it standard layout. So X, Y plane. Um, we're just going to use this to say put a grid of holes across the front of the part, whatever. It doesn't matter. Um, so linear X, Y, enter, mode is length. We want to define the total length between first hole and last hole. Enter. Uh, actually, this is, we'll just change it to six. Enter, so six inches between our first and last hole. Um, we can do it at an angle. If we do it at zero, this is just gonna be a straight hole pattern. Actually, let's change it to 45 give us some feedback in our Y as well. Uh, let's do six holes. And so our hole number one. Drill. That hole is done. Now we're going to move to hole number two. So we're going to move to our Y coordinate. hole two. Next hole. X, 
etc. on down. And then it's over. Anytime you can jump out of the any of these cycles, whether it's moving, bolt hole circles, by just pressing whatever function you're in. So now we're back to absolute mode. Another popular function that people are gonna have questions about is bolt hole circle. Basically the same thing as linear array and the way it steps you through. Again, press the bolt hole circle symbol. You have different planes you can choose. Uh, X and Y is going to be your standard top face of the part if you're using the mill or drill. Um, center position, you can give it whatever position you want. In this case, we have 0, 0 as our, our location. Diameter, we'll do uh, 3 inch diameter. Number of holes, we want 6. Starting angle is zero. You could do, you know, your your holes in a in an arc if you only wanted from let's say I don't know zero to ninety. But pushing zero here is your starting angle, and then your ending angle you would change to ninety. Three sixty is going to put all six holes in a full three hundred and sixty degree circle, uh, and then you just dial in where you want to go. So our first hole is going to be. Zero, zero. All three, etc. When you're done with all six holes, you'll get an over at that point to jump back into your standard absolute or incremental screen. You simply hit the function that you were just in, in this case, bolt those circles.